company to be live at a particular show. Now, they're not going to turn around and start touring the United States. They're going to hit California. And potentially, if they really wanted to, they could do California and Washington, I guess. They'll do New York, too. They've run (laughs) shows up there in the past. I mean, it's going to be some kind of, like, a connection show with, say, like, Ring of Honor or something like that. Because they're not going to want to fly out. 25 30 40 when you talk about production equipment all that type of thing i don't know it'll connect to the dojo that's here i think that's their plan is basically to make us their nxt and i i hope that's what it is and they don't make this they don't try to put this on the level of themselves or wwe because then that's when they're going to start to run into problems and that's when they're going to start Oh, we got to change our production style. Oh, oh my God, look at the rating. We're not pulling 3 million people like Raw, which if they ever think is uh, going to happen, they're wrong. And I mean, because Kidani's already said out loud, like, I want to compete with WWE. He doesn't need to compete with WWE. New Japan doesn't need to compete with WWE. They need to ex- coexist as two totally different things, and that's what they are, and that's why I, I adore both of them. Well, they're competing with WWE in Japan, and they're winning there. Well, yeah. So that's the thing. You're going to win in Japan, and you're going to lose in America. And that's just how it's going to be. I mean, unless unless Vince totally screws the pooch and completely makes WWE a, a dumpster fire. Which is never and, going and, to happen. As much as and, people uh, want to d- decry the downfall of Vince McMahon being an idiot these days, have you watched an Attitude Era Raw? Holy shit, that was way worse than anything we have now. Yeah, I mean, well, I I, I would more point at the pre-Attitude Era Raws, which, okay, I'll wow. Okay, I'll give you that right before. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm I mean... That. When when you start throwing doinks out there and that type of thing, I mean it's it, it's a product that the constantly evolves. The truth commission, the truth commission. Hey, you had Cyrus working oh, that man, but who, uh, Cyrus and, now the new color commentator for New Japan. By the way, that's why I thought yeah. of that, Don Callis. Yeah, and Kurgan, Kurgan was very tall. Yes, but anyway, anyway we, we can get into a truth commission. Uh, discussion some other day yes. that but I, yeah i think we move well this is this is going to be something that develops a lot over time over the next over the next year to two years the landscape is they're going to try to change the landscape I'm, my belief 100 percent wholeheartedly now and i don't see it changing in 12 to 24 months is that new japan is here they do okay they try to go too hard and they fail uh, they're they're doing it the the slow and steady way right now. They they saw how much like subscriber base jumped with uh, Wrestle Kingdom, mm-hmm. just you know, and 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 immediately after Wrestle Kingdom happened, when like Okada Omega happened, and everybody's like, oh crap, I need to see that match. Let me pay my nine ninety nine in yen to see it, and then get access to a bunch of other things. My- but now they're, they're, the door is kind of opening a little bit more because it became accessible to people because it, still the website, just a train wreck to begin with. If you do I not it's, speak it's a train wreck in Japanese. Yeah. But now they're starting to reveal more. Yeah. You know, they're going, okay, well let's open the door a little bit more to an American audience. Let's have more English commentary on our shows now because before it was one now it's oh well let's do some more and see what happens let's do a little bit more and see what happens and you're doing it gradual you're not doing this giant launch and going guess what new japan america is here now it's not it's it's still the same thing that we're doing but hey if you really want to check it out we'll make it a little bit easier for you to check out here here's another taste come on my my final point on new japan and you kind of you kind of mentioned it already they need an all English website. Now have have all all the stu- old stuff. There's no reason to go back and record any commentary for that. But have all the content there. But it needs to be an English facing interface. Yeah, the, because the I mean, the, the 
I, I thought about subscribing to New Japan World like, I don't know, like nine months ago or something like that to just kind of like check it out. And I went to the website and I'm just like, what the hell is happening? And you hit Google Translate and you're like, still, what the hell is happening? Well, and it's at least it's not an easy interface to work with to figure out how to find the matches that you want to find and that type of thing. I mean, it's not the network. Em- embrace the network. It's that that's relatively easy to find the stuff that you want to find yeah, but there, there is an english page now there is an english sign up page you can now use paypal uh, all, all which is helpful but there needs to be a fully english version of that website uh to help them because i think some people see that and have that same reaction you did which is like yeah. uh, i don't i don't feel like going into this rabbit hole right now keep the bad translations there i mean you know oh please have... i will continue i will now that I've been using that website for what the two and a half years, New Japan World's been around now. I, it, it, it's part of it's part of the experience of getting ready for a New Japan show, uh, of being like, oh, games one through eight are on. Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can talk about this for another. We can talk about New Japan trying to start the next war for the next three hours, but we're not going to. We're going to try to wrap it up with some miscellaneous news items. Uh, the first one, which came out today, AJ Styles got robbed. I guess they wanted some. I, I didn't think they wanted Thank none. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, here's the one point I want to hit on this. This was at a show in Arkansas, I believe. Uh, they stole his bag, which had his Xbox and his little travel case with the screen in it and some games and his iPhone and his Beats headphones. He, now, here's the kicker. $1,000 American cash fine he travels a lot i get it and seven thousand dollars in yen tom what the fuck is he doing with seven thousand dollars in yen i thought it was seven thousand yen it said seven thousand dollars in japanese yen i read the article three times seven thousand dollars in japanese yen so i'm assuming it wasn't seven thousand yen which is what seventy dollars u.s yeah roughly maybe he doesn't trust banks i don't know maybe <laughs> let, let, let's spark the rumors going maybe maybe aj you know had a few bucks out there just in case like some of the new japan guys rolled around it's like hey we've AJ's, got yen here aj's in with the yakuza that's my i'm fully convinced we he's in with massive with seven grand seven thousand dollars in yen so if we should see him and masahiro chono together anytime soon be concerned yeah um, Chris Jericho on this podcast, and I didn't listen to it, but I'm just rereading the news I read because that's what wrestling people do on the internet. Uh, we, oui. <laughs> uh, he's apparently resigned. I, like I said, I haven't listened to it. And I didn't see any uh, details about terms or anything, but uh, I would assu- I would assume it's through Mania, and then he's probably out because apparently he was month to month before now, and maybe see, he's here for that duration. But it, I, I'm happy he's on the best run I think he's ever had. In, in the rundown uh, notes that I read that you had shared with me, it you resign. put it, it said resign. There was no hyphen in there, so I, I was read that. <laughs> I I was trying to figure out who was going to be U.S. champion now. Uh, color me disappointed in the sense that I mean it's great that he's staying around. And he is on a roll. He is. I mean he's been so much better than his last three or four kind of. Uh, comebacks until Fozzie goes out on the road, that type of thing. But, and I think he realizes that he's got this flow going, but um, to not jump on the opportunity of how him and Owens now have the U.S. title and to not make that a Canadian title. I mean, I know the gimmick's been done before Lance Storm, but I want to see that as the Canadian heavyweight championship. Tom, be serious for a second. <laughs> but um. But yeah, I mean, Jericho. That's my thought. It, it's funny. I've been I've been watching Rumbles recently, and it's like it just seems like every year recently, it's the surprise comeback has been Jericho because he would leave, <laughs> and then it's like, oh, it's Chris Jericho, the surprise entrant, and you know, it's like, well, yeah, you knew he was going to come back, and he'd come back for three months and then leave to go on a summer tour with Fozzie, then come back for another few months. And then, and he never got 
that kind of momentum going. And I remember when he first came back, this most recent run, and outside of my children seeing him and calling him Gordon Ramsay, <laughs> they we call i remember calling him cool dad jericho yeah because That's what he was doing the whole program with ambrose yeah he he was just he was still using his like you know the y2j mannerisms of like the his like catchphrases from 2001 which weren't really over then either but and it just wasn't working and it's just like why is he and he just finally decided to go full blown like obnoxious you know pretty boy heel and it works perfectly for him and watching him in the ring has been like really impressive too especially when again i'm kind of going back on the network and i'm looking at say like 97 98 wcw shows trying to show my children all the things that went wrong and (laughs) learn from history children and i'm like look i'm like look they put these fossils like uh, you know, Hogan and Savage and the Warrior, they put them in main event positions. And then I go hit Wikipedia and I'm like, my God, Jericho is older than those guys mm-hmm. were then. And he looks fine. I mean, he's he's become the next generation flair without, you know, the issues at home and that type of thing. Being but nearly on that level. Sorry, I love Jericho. He's, he'll never be on Flair's level. Well, a, a flair at the you know, the 40 plus level. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, he's not, he's not prime, but it's no, I, I think he realistically, he is this generation's flair at this point. Okay. Uh, Kurt Angle's going to go in the hall of fame. I can't wait for that speech. And he said he wanted stone cold to induct him. I'm excited. <laughs> it's going to be, uh, I mean, Again, you, you have to go back into the network and just look at the man's work uh, because I won't go to TNA and watch that crap. But, I mean, his <laughs> – well, just When he was there, it was good? Oh, yeah, there but – There was a lot of good work he did there. Yeah, I mean, he did great work. I'm just refusing to watch the products <laughs> surrounding it. Okay. But, um, I mean, just – and to watch his rise, because I remember when he first debuted and it just wasn't working. And I don't know if that was intentional or not, because he played a complete white bread baby face. And this was the attitude error. So they turned against it was almost that kind of honky tonk man type heat where he came in initially as a face and a complete uber over the top baby face and they turned against him because they're like nobody wants this good guy wholesome milk drinking you know telling me how i should live my life you know this is the attitude error screw you i'm gonna drink beer and give the middle finger to my boss and get fired in the process and join a cult and kidnap the boss's daughter and yeah anyway those are good times Uh, right uh, Kenny Omega may or may not be a free agent. Who the hell knows? WWE posted a, f- a video that set the internet on fire with Seth Rollins said he uh, hoped Omega was in the Rumble and that would be a dream match for him. Omega also said on the Taz show that he's a free agent. Uh, New Japan saying they don't believe he is. Uh, I think we're all being worked, but holy crap, I want it to be a thing. Oh, uh, I... I, want, I wholeheartedly I to, believe it. I want him to come out number 10, too. Just terrible. <laughs> Ty Dillinger's coming no, out number 10. No, I think you have... All right, if you have your choice between Kenny Omega coming out of 10 or Ty Dillinger, like, he's going to get that initial, like, damn it, it's not Ty Dillinger, and then when everybody sees him walk out, because he'll obviously have new music and no one will know what it is, uh, the d- Dat Pop, yo... Um, but uh, how much i mean and and that's the thing that you have to kind of fear with these things is it's it was one thing when it was styles because styles wrestled in america forever too yeah he i mean he was at his prime in japan but he was also the tna guy for a decade and you know american fans know it's it's you don't want to overestimate the knowledge of the fan base and so you gotta it's remember, a, Royal Rumble is the number two big travel show for people. 
So that's an international audience show, much like Mania. Uh, the people that are going to rumble know.